Today we have a very special guest with us, a chef and training and iconic menu and recipe developer, Lucy Moore. Hi, thank you so much for having me. We're really interested to have you with us. I would like to know, I heard you do some recipes, especially in Kuwait. So tell us more about it. Yep, that's true. So I kind of have always been very passionate about food and found myself working more and more into the industry, started off more on the marketing side, then into strategy. And in marketing, kind of the product itself goes hand in hand. If you have a great product, you can market it very well. And I started working with a team of chefs uh, most of whom were Kuwaiti and all from various backgrounds. We worked with a pastry chef, uh, one who specializes in drinks, and we each had our own area of interest and together we started working with clients to develop, sometimes it was just one or two dishes, sometimes it was an entire menu. And I, I think for us, we specialize a little bit more in contemporary dishes oh, and I just love being in the kitchen. Like it, for me, it's my happy place. Yeah. I can disappear. Some people, you know, paint. Some people listen to music. For me, cooking is just that, like, freedom of expression. Yeah. And I'm sure you're one of them, Hanan. <laughs> I, you know what I'm thinking? I'm going to be best friends with Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> That's so yeah. sweet. So as uh, folks at home can see, even though you are an expert at making cuisines for a Kuwaiti audience, and obviously we have fantastic taste in food, and mm -hmm. we actually do have, in my opinion, some of the highest standard of food quality. So how was your experience here living in Kuwait, and how has it helped you understand the taste palette of our audience here? So I've been here for nearly 10 years, and I think I've been very blessed to see Kuwait dramatically change on the food scene and coffee scene during that time. And I remember first moving here and there was just a couple of local concepts and we've now seen this like explosion and we've seen, you know, contemporary, we've seen classic dishes, like there's so much going on in the, the culinary world here. And I think one thing that's been beautiful to see is just how many people have pursued culinary as a profession, not just a hobby. And a number of young people have gone and studied, some have learned in kitchens, some in universities. And I think how I see the kind of palette of Kuwait as well is um, just very modern. I think there is a, this beautiful uh, respect for the heritage of you know Kuwait, Kuwaiti cuisine and like where it's come from but then there's also kind of pushing the boundaries and you'll find dishes here that you won't see anywhere else. And yeah especially I think the society yeah. over here are uh, let's say very picky and they wouldn't uh, like their taste is different mm -hmm. like when uh, any kind of person would open a business let's say a restaurant or so on would choose a very certain and specialized like uh, taste let's say or yeah. recipe mm -hmm. so didn't you find it really hard in this kind of environment or society because they wouldn't like anything um Yes and no. I think like it pushed me to refine how I see food. Um, and coming from a Western background and living here for all of my adult life, I think I've managed to kind of integrate. Like I always wanted to uh, be part of the local community. I, I didn't want to be uh, kind of an, an expat. I wanted to understand and, and learn and it, it extends far beyond food. Like my interest in culture in general is, like, I feel like I'm always learning new things. Like yeah. even recently we, we did a day trip to see the camel racing and like that was a whole new experience for me. And all of these kind of factors play into uh, like is it hard yes but do I love it yes and I think my passion for what I'm in far exceeds my uh, kind of nervousness of oh. getting into it there's yeah. definitely times where I'm like you know maybe this isn't for me or you know like cuisine it can be long hours and you know la last week we had a big event so I had a 16 hour work day wow. but by the end of it I was like oh my gosh I'm so proud like we yeah. achieved something amazing and when I kind of took the the let's say full-time step of not just doing recipe development not just doing strategy but actually becoming a trainee chef and I was very uh, blessed to be able to join one of the top local concepts um, I'm learning from a great executive chef, Chef Bernard, and I feel like what I'm kind of 
pursuing now, it's like it doesn't feel like work. I wake up and I'm like, right, what's on the schedule today? And I've always been that kind of person. Like I think all of my positions I've held and all the, the kind of uh, jobs that I've been working in, I, I have that excitement for doing Because you have something. basically this passion and this love mm -hmm. of what you're doing, basically. That's why you don't feel the work you're doing, basically. Yeah. 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 I think it's probably similar to you ladies, that you, yeah. you want to be here, you enjoy what you do, and I think passion drives innovation as well. Yeah. I think when you're, like, like I, I say I'm a chef in training, but honestly, I think you could ask me this, like, what do you do when I'm 18? I'll still tell you when I'm training. Because yeah. it's endless what you can learn. And I, I have ideas of where I want to specialize. Um, I know that the, there's certain things that I find more interesting um, that I want to pursue more. And like one of them is definitely like local ingredients, regional ingredients. There's an abundance out there. And some things I'm aware of, some things I'm like, oh, I, I, I know if I put a little bit more effort and you know talk to people who are maybe more in the field of botanics and horticulture, like I'm going to learn more about yeah, what there is sure. regionally. And I, I think I can bring a little bit of um, what dishes kind of that we find in the West and like tweak them using local mm. ingredients and that for me is really interesting. Yeah, and I think Hanan, you're one of them. She loves the kitchen. She's always in the kitchen. She's always cooking, doing some uh, different kind of recipes. That's yeah. why I need to keep my nails really short because I'm mm -hmm. yep. most of the time in the kitchen. Yeah. You know? Speaking of fusion, actually, I did want to kind of yeah. let's do a little bit of a fun game together. Okay. So fusion is a topic of discussion in a lot of the restaurants here where they kind of mix in different cultures in a dish. How about we kind of share an interesting dish that we had uh, that might have been a mix of two different fusions, like between two different countries, but they mixed to have a dish. Do you guys have a favorite mixed dish? I don't have anything in mind. <laughs> to be honest. In mind. No, <laughs> actually, I'm still thinking about the spices because Lucy was talking about how she likes to take advantage of what's available in the region. Mm -hmm. And the Arab world and our Arabic culture, and especially Kuwait, we're known to have some very unique and different spices. Mm -hmm. And Gumar was uh, sending us messages this morning <laughs> talking about how you like to improvise certain recipes by yeah. simply just adding uh, a few spices. You know, it's an add, divide, subtract. Mm -hmm. So would Definitely. you kindly elaborate on that? And it leads to the fusion because yeah. sometimes like the spices could be Arabian in a Western dish. So that's kind of an example of what I was looking for. <laughs> but uh, like, I, yeah, I, I think, think Lucy would know better to explain. Exactly what you ladies kind of have uh, both mentioned like for for me I can see kind of how fusion and maybe this is what's harder to articulate because you're entering like a creative realm yeah. when you're developing a dish and you want something a little bit more unique you're definitely looking at the perhaps like techniques of one culture the ingredients from another and I think when when you kind of open up your mind and you don't allow the kind of oh, you can only do this with this ingredient. You start to be able to move into this kind of artistic realm. So for me, when I'm working on something new, and I, probably I can give an example of something I made yesterday, is there's a very famous saying like, uh, let food be thy medicine. Mm. And food can really affect like so many different areas of your health, and spices in particular are something that we're now in that season where we're getting a little bit sick. Myself, I'm suffering a little bit, fighting yeah. off a cold. So yesterday I was like, okay, yeah, I have like cauliflower in the fridge. I have onions, I have garlic. You know, onion and garlic being great kind of bases for creating something like a soup and like getting that health in. So I added in uh, cloves and coriander and all of these different kind of spices and uh, you know, cumin, soften those up in a little bit of butter, sorted everything off and then made like a very like nourishing soup. And it's not, maybe not, it's not, uh, you know, groundbreaking. Yeah. But for me, it's that like once I'm in the kitchen, I see what's in front of me, I'll, I'll start kind of, I guess like going beyond like just like the day-to-day -day thoughts, I'll start imagining. Yeah. And that like a childish imagination, I think in any area of creativity, we have to encourage like that you break the confines of expectations. And, and I think because I'm more into cuisine than say like pastry or bakery, um, cuisine allows a little bit more to, to play because pastry and bakery, like if you're making a dough, you kind of have a set uh, 
number of ingredients that you need to include, like how it works is structurally a little bit different or scientifically different. When you're in cuisine, you have that kind of... You can like, add this kind of, I think always when you add mm -hmm. any to any dish, this kind of spices, it would make a difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if I'm going to go into like what, what's coming to my mind is if I'm going to reimagine something. Um, let's take like lasagna. Lasagna being popular, Italian food being popular, very simple. You've got your pasta, you've got a, a white sauce and a red sauce. And those you could start kind of experimenting, playing around with. You could introduce some like saffron and maybe some like light spices into your white sauce. You could go more kind of uh, fusion with the red sauce as well, like maybe introduce like a little bit of uh, pomegranate molasses. Uh, I'm feeling few spices right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm starving right now. And you could right start now. kind of layering up and like yeah. just making these very small adjustments. And when you're working on something quite unique, you, you, you keep going back to it. Like I worked on a, a effectively a saffron and date cheesecake for a client uh, about a year ago. And I probably made about 20 cheesecakes in a week. Wow. And it was a mix of just like fine tuning the levels of ingredients, yeah. uh, keeping on uh, working at like the baking temperatures to get the right consistency. And it's just, I want to say, a, a continual pursuit of uh, knowledge and perfection before you get that final part where you're like, okay, this is something that I can present to someone and I'm confident that people will enjoy it. Lovely. That is uh, truly amazing, and uh, thank you so much for explaining the science behind food and fusion. And uh, we'll be back. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>